So how do you get out of debt quickly? Well, this is a topic that I know a lot of you are very passionate and very interested about. Perhaps you're struggling with debt. I wanted to make a video which is really hands-on and experience from our own life. So in this video, you're gonna meet my husband. We're gonna talk about our debt-free journey, how we got out of 24, 25,000 pounds worth of consumer debt. We're gonna break that down for you and I'm also going to give you some of my top tips and strategies to get out of debt quickly, particularly if this is your focus for 20, 2020, I think you're going to really enjoy this video. Hi there, welcome back to my channel today. My name is Jennifer from MamaForFor.com. I make videos all about personal finance, investing and success mindset. I want you to have the best version of your life possible with using money as a resource to fund that. Today's video is very special and as you'll see, I'm going to be joined by a very special guest. We're going to break down how to get out of debt quickly. So today I'm joined also by my wonderful husband, Matthew Kempson, the co-star and somewhat on the Mama For For channel for just one day. But as I mentioned, you know, we had roughly £24,000 worth of consumer debt and I've chatted about it before, but I wanted to bring Matt onto this video because I know a lot of you really are struggling with a lot of debt, perhaps larger than £24,000, £25,000, even in the 40s, 50s. And if you're not struggling with that amount of debt, these same principles I know can help you if you're just even thinking about one or two or even £5,000 worth of debt that you want to get rid of in 2020 and the next couple of years. So when we met and moved in together, I came to this relationship with £24,000 worth of consumer debt. It had come from a long line of poor purchases, poor decisions with my money, going back about 20 years. 20 years of ultimately living on credit cards and having personal loans and going through moments of paying those off or consolidating them, but not changing those habits, which meant that I racked up that debt again or accumulated even more debt. So potentially I would consolidate a few credit cards that maybe added up to five or 6,000 pounds into a loan, but I didn't close those credit cards and my behaviors hadn't changed, which meant that not only did I have a five or 6,000 pound loan now, but I had two empty credit cards with that kind of credit limit on them and I continued my spending habits, which meant that I ended up with 10, 11,000 pounds worth of debt. And you continue this cycle on until you get to the point where you're at 24,000 pounds or more. Exactly. And from my background, so I had always come from uh, money, unless you had cash, that was the only way you would spend it effectively. So having debt or anything, when we realised we had this together now, it, there was no option other than to tackle it and change that. I was just to a life completely paying in cash. There was no alternative. I wasn't about to join you. But the great thing was we decided together that we would tackle this. And so these very practical steps that we believe can help you get out of debt, and I do say get out of debt quickly quickly because I believe in the momentum and the mindset changes that will happen as a result of these steps. You'll have a goal through these steps, you'll actually work out exactly how much you need to pay back, but things will happen very quickly once you make that focus. So how exactly do you get rid of debt, particularly if you've got large amounts like we had? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to have some element of accountability and responsibility, I'm afraid. Probably the situations that got you into the debt, and I've touched upon this before, it's probably been a little bit of head in the sand mentality. You know you've had debt, you've seen the credit card bills are coming in, but you're probably choosing to ignore or perhaps not even check the amounts that are on the credit card. The only way you know there's a problem is when it bounces when you try to spend on it and you've reached your limit. So you have to take full responsibility. So you have to write down exactly how much you own individual places or different creditors. You then need to know exactly what is the interest percentage on those debts and then finally the minimum payment that they require from you. Now there's no way around it and usually getting this information you will probably have to phone directly to a lot of companies to get the up-to-date real-time information. Now the reason that we need that black and white picture of exactly what is due is because there's no other way of getting that ground zero. If you know that you want to change this, you want to change your habits, you want to get out of debt because you want to build a life without debt with more money staying in your pocket so that you can design it differently. You have to know exactly what are your debts right now so that we can tackle them head on. But before you do that, you need to make sure that you're in the right mind space to actually believe that you want to make this change and get rid of the debt. So for me, I found that putting all of my debts into one place with a fixed term and therefore an expiry date on when it would be paid off and complete was the smartest way to go 
Also, I had quite high interest rates on my credit cards. So by taking those down to quite a low rate loan and committing to as much money as I could each month to get rid of that debt quickly. But in addition to that, once those cards were cleared by the loan, then I actually closed most of those accounts only having one emergency card available which was locked away never to be used so that I didn't rack up any further debt on top of that loan. So changing the habit that had got me into the debt in the first place. And a critical thing as well, Matt actually went and took time to find out the minimum payments that I mentioned before. So we knew that we could afford this loan before we even considered it to pay off the debt. So that's something you absolutely need to make do. Whatever strategy you're going to apply and I'll talk about different ways of actually paying off debt a little bit deeper. But but consider as an efficient way to actually pay this off that allows you to focus on paying down the debt as quickly as you can but also lock in your mindset this was a loan that we took out we were able to do that thankfully in our situation that brought down the interest overall we were in charge for the amount of money due to everyone but allowed us also to cut up those credit cards there wasn't the opportunity to spend anymore it's not necessarily the ideal for everyone but in our case it certainly worked and was the most efficient way so one of the reasons that worked was it actually allowed us to fix the amount that we wanted to pay each month on the debt so for example if the credit cards needed me to pay 100 pounds a month in total to meet the minimum payments, it would make sense to pay more than that. And therefore by having a loan in place, you commit yourself to an amount. So using that same example of a hundred pounds credit card payment, if we moved it to a loan and set it to 200 pounds a month, then you're paying it off faster, you're paying it off at a lower interest rate, and that end date then comes a lot sooner. And the other great thing was because we had a loan I could see on our banking app. So I would log on probably much every single week or every single month when payday came. And if there was even a hint of extra money, we would throw it at it. So the next step that ties in with knowing exactly how much debt you have, you have to then have a bare bones budget. At the time we had two full time wages that we could throw at debt as the priority, but you have to have a budget in place, particularly if you're struggling with debt so that you can get debt free. The reason being you've looked at exactly how much money is coming into your home through wages, through self-employed wages. Then you know the minimum debt payments you need to make or the loan payments, whatever you're classifying your debt as. But then you also know how much you can afford to overpay and potentially how much do you need also to live and ensure life isn't too painful while you focus on debt. So that bare bones budget will really be the kind of optimal budget, the optimal way of spending your money to focus on paying off debt but also allowing life to carry on. You shouldn't be getting into more debt perhaps with a utility company or you're scrimping perhaps not even giving yourself enough to eat to focus on paying off debt. I don't believe paying off debt makes you a bad person. We just need to be smart with our money choices and so make sure that life is comfortable it's okay but there's still that main focus to pay down this debt so we touched upon it a little bit when Matt was talking about we actually got a loan to cover our debt there was a fixed time period it was five years we knew exactly how much the monthly amount was that worked in our case we did the maths beforehand that meant this was the most economical way and mindset way as well of tackling our debt we also made sure that we stretched our budget to allow us to pay as much as possible onto that loan which is why we chose a five year term. That was the term that allowed us to maximize the payment that we wanted to make and also have that term as small as it could possibly be for us. So the next thing you've got obviously how much your debts are, you've got the minimum payments, you've got that outline of budget that we talked about. You need to then pick a strategy to actually pay off this debt. So we obviously had a loan effectively that did that structure for us. However, there are a couple of very distinct ways of actually paying off debt if you don't have those options to have a loan to cover it. One way is called the snowball method and this basically means all those debts that you have got, you write them from the lowest amount down to the highest amount and you tackle in order starting with the lowest, you focus any money above the minimum payments on all your debts, you would put it at the lowest amount of debt first until that was completely wiped off. If that's then gone you move on to the second smallest debt and basically you build like a snowball, you're tackling all your debt from smallest to largest, you're ignoring the interest rate. Now the reason that you might want to choose that method is because it's a great mindset trick. You're effectively getting that high, that buzz of getting rid of the smallest debt, moving on to the next. You're still tackling the whole debt, but we're just 
string in bite-sized pieces. The next method is called the avalanche method and that actually works by looking at the percentage interest you're being charged. We're really looking at mathematically where are we going to save the most money by tackling perhaps the largest or the second largest debt. There's a mathematical way to approach it. Therefore it's not determined by the size of the debt but rather which debt is costing us the most money every single month. Now the great thing is if you perhaps are completely lost on these terms we created a tab within the autopilot my spreadsheet system which is our product that we sell it's always mentioned down in the description bar but it's basically a tool within that spreadsheet excel document you plug in your dates you plug in the interest rates the minimum payments and it will do the maths for you so if you're struggling and you wish to invest in that way please go and check out our autopilot money system as well so the great thing about that system is similar to a loan where you have a fixed end date for it whether you're using the snowball or the avalanche method if you punch the numbers into that spreadsheet then you're able to actually see a date when you will be debt free assuming that you commit to a particular amount of money you're paying off of your debts each month over and above the minimum payments so it's wonderful to be able to see a end date in sight that you can aim for you can have a little cake celebration when you get there <laughs> And the other fantastic thing is, and this is why I love Excel and spreadsheets, this is where that kind of system came from. The backbone behind it was playing around with the numbers about how much you can pay off your debt if you are choosing the snowball or the avalanche method. Or whatever route you're choosing to pay off your debt, it allows you the opportunity to play around and get excited about when you can actually be debt free. Seeing that debt free date, knowing there's an end to perhaps some of the pain, the suffering that you felt having this day is a fantastic motivational tool. And the great thing is, in our case, as I said, it was a five year loan, we actually dropped that down to three years. And the reason was, five years seems such a lifetime away. I wasn't prepared for it to pass without some effort there. So every time we received a bonus from work, every time there was spare money left over from the food budget, every time that we made any kind of saving, I threw it at that debt. And that's why that five years went down really quickly to, as I say, over three years. So in order to make all of this happen, in order to make sure that you stay heading towards debt free, but also don't make the situation worse along the way as you manage to free up space on credit cards for further spending, you need to be building up new behaviors. Now how you do that, how you find your why for removing that debt, and how you find your way of staying on track and not allowing yourself to overspend in future will vary per person. For me, I had Jennifer. <laughs> Yes, I can't be in all your homes, unfortunately, but you know, I try my best through YouTube. <laughs> so by having someone ultimately be a bit of a middleman between me and spending cash, it meant that there was a barrier for entry as far as overspending. Having someone to be accountable to, for me, was a really good way of making my behaviours change. Because changing behaviours is something that's quite difficult, whether you're looking at your finances, or your health, or your diet, or the way that you parent, or anything that you want to do, changing behaviours is really challenging. And finding whatever system works for you in order to achieve that is the most important thing. There are lots of ways of doing that. Sometimes it's just deciding that it's time to make that life change for yourself, and then being accountable to yourself. That works for a lot of people, but for me, having someone to be accountable to and having someone almost as a bit of a gatekeeper was a wonderful thing because it allowed me to learn the skills that I needed to, and I'm still learning in some ways, whilst knowing that I couldn't cause myself further problems because there was someone in the way. So having an individual or maybe joining debt-free groups um, Facebook groups or online forums yeah. and discussing things, anywhere that you can be open and honest and have a level of accountability can help if it's something that you feel like you can't do by yourself quite as well as you'd like to. And I would also say the main thing is to not think you're a bad person because you have debt as well. Now obviously in our case it was Matt brought this debt into our family but it was not then his whole responsibility to clear that. We made a decision it was something we were going to tackle together. It was very much that was the focus. It didn't matter who brought it or whose fault it was. It didn't make him a bad person. It didn't make me a bad person. We just wanted to make sure our life moving forward didn't involve that debt because we wanted to free up as much money as we could so that we could do more experience 
experiences and live life and have a different way of living as a result. So when you have those moments where you can be a team together, it really, if you're on your own or you may want to join Facebook groups or other kind of responsibility, accountability groups, that's fantastic. If you've got, you know, your partner who's on this journey together that you can really lean on, there's going to be difficult times, there's going to be messy times, it's going to be painful, but know that long term, you're going to get through it together and it's going to be one of those stories that you can also then help other people who are maybe struggling in debt, but that you know you've achieved it together for a better tomorrow. So I'm going to emphasize this point as well. Once we had that debt structure, we knew exactly when our debt free date was, we really focused on throwing as much available cash at that debt. We wanted to really speed up the time that we meant we could be debt free because we had better uses for that money. We'd chosen obviously to make decisions in the past that meant we were paying long term for purchases that perhaps we didn't wish we had right now, but we wanted a better way of managing our money in the future. And so for those reasons, anytime that you get any form of bonus or perhaps any extra money you earn from side hustle opportunities, you're thinking of even starting a side hustle to throw at debt, use all that extra cash right now, get rid of the debt as quickly as you can, but then also think of the extra income you will be looking forward to when life doesn't involve debt. You're going to free up a huge amount of your money back into your hands. Now the other great thing is because of our experience with credit card consumer loans and all that, I'm not scared also of having these things in life. We won't go back to that same place perhaps with as much debt, but we do still have one family credit card. And that's controversial, I know, for some people who have had debt-free journeys. But the reason is it's not the credit card's fault that that debt was accumulated. We then use it for very particular purchases. It's always paid off in full, so that's a different habit than previously. But it is obviously part of our financial way of managing money, but we treat it very differently now. It's one card between the family. There's a very low limit on that card. Perhaps if I want to put the holiday expenditures or anything like that, any purchases, we will get that extra level of protection perhaps from using our credit card, but it's treated very differently. And that's also the great benefit you can have in the future. That just because you had one habit in the past doesn't mean you're going to continue that habit. Before you started to focus on it, you were probably spending anywhere between 10 and 30% of your salary paying off that debt each month. Or more for some people. Or more for some people. Now, in an ideal world, you'd ramp that up a bit to clear it off. But once you've done so, then think about that amount of cash being back in your own pocket. Not going out to someone else, not being a stress or a burden upon your life, but actually they're enabling you to do the things you want to do, whether that's saving for the future, whether that's putting money by so that Christmas is not as painful as it used to be, or whether it's being able to go on more trips abroad or more trips. By paying off that debt, that money goes back to you to start living the life that you want to. And the great thing as well, that freed up cash, if you don't need a bigger why than just more money staying in your pocket, you can also work on a lot of concepts I talk about on this channel. Because we were debt free, we then last year made a decision about our family going to one income, but we're also working on financial freedom. That is going to be in our future. It's also going to be that we've got little side businesses, we've got further education, we've got different opportunities that we didn't have or we couldn't see when we had the debt. And because of the debt, it allowed us to explore more opportunities, more ways of bringing more income into our house and living life differently. And if I could summarise this for you in one easy sentence, it would be if you want to get out of debt fast, make it a goal, understand your why, but the best thing you can do is you just have to do it. You do not put it off another day, you start today. Obviously, I've created a couple of tools that I believe can help you if you want that extra help, such as the spreadsheets, you can go and check them out. But there's lots of information, there's lots of people out there who can help you get out of debt. But ultimately, it needs your action. I believe it's possible in any income to get rid of the past mistakes, but you're also gonna pivot it. You're gonna use those past mistakes to then propel you into a better future with hopefully investing, perhaps even learning new skills, changing your life for the better. So if you're struggling with debt in any way, I hope these tips and strategies that we actually use in our life to get out of debt could help you in some way. If you would like to watch any of my other content, I do have a couple of videos that talk about paying off debt. I talk about other ways to actually get more money in your hands, save money a little bit quicker so that you perhaps can pay off debt. So go and check those out after this video. And if you want to see more of me, on oh, future yeah. videos, leave a comment below, down there, leave a comment saying you want to see this guy who makes spreadsheets, <laughs> who worked in finance and therefore really does know a thing or two about the whole money situation. 
So if you enjoyed today's video, I would love if you would give it a big thumbs up. All helps with the algorithm for someone else finding it. If you've enjoyed this double act in particular, my husband starring in a mama for our video, and we actually have a family channel. It's called The Kempson House. You can type it in and find us. We'd love to have more subscribers. It's all about Matt and me and the kids and family life. So not talking about money, more about what is life like in our household. I think you might enjoy it as well. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.